You may be an open book, SpongeBob, but I'm a bit more complicated than that. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. I uh, show my channel on st stream. I really appreciate it, Clan. Ah, there he is. What's Gigi! up, my boy? Hold on, let me. Let's. I got hey. your stream on mute right now, so I can keep up with the chat. So. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine, Doc. Hey, nice. What's up, man? It's going good, man. Um, I I just want to say off rip, I'm really nervous because you got like a really awesome chat, and I don't want to come off as stupid towards them. So. <laughs> no, man. The whole look, we're all stupid here, okay? <laughs> they they <laughs> they they follow me, and I'm stupid, and then you know they I kind of pass on some of that stupidity to them. We're all kind of dumb, so it's all good. Yeah. What's up, dude? Uh, it's going good, man. I mean, where do you want me to start with today's game, man? Whatever, bro. We could talk about today's game. We can talk about life. Whatever. In like, <laughs> yeah, just life, video games. I don't care. Um, I mean, I'm sorry to the, to the Spurs fans, obviously. Like, um, but we got to be honest here. We got lucky in tonight's game. Like, the Magic are like two and seven. Oh, I just gotta follow. Uh, uh, claim the Spurs fan has subscribed. You weren't already subscribed to me. I'm part. That no, was I'm so kidding. stupid. It was so stupid. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know. I was like, why am I not? So I went ahead and did it. I'm messing with you, man. Um, but I mean, we gotta be honest here, Spurs fans. Like, we got lucky in this game. Like, uh, shout out Dylan. I think it was that was uh talking to me in the chat. I mm. we this the Magic are. We're two and seven, I think. Now they're two and eight since we're gonna win this game. But it, he said, it was just two versions of bad, and that's why we won because we were giving them so much space, and they were just missing. And that's what why I said we were getting lucky because they were going. I think they were thirty five. I just checked the box score. I think it said they were thirty five from field goal and twenty from three. So, I mean, we were leaving them completely open, and they were just missing shots, and that's why we won. But you do that against, like, any other team, and we're going to get shot out, which is what's been happening the last couple days. And we just got lucky this game. We need to step it up for real. So I'm, I'm really starting to come to the conclusion that maybe we're just, like, not that good. I mean, I, I don't want to say that, but, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to feel like we're just not that good. Like, we're there. The foundation is good. It's just – God, man, we we don't have a we don't have a star. We don't have someone that we can just lean on. And I looked at the stats. Um, who who posted? I don't know if it was Noah. Somebody posted a Spurs guy, Spurs Twitter guy posted mm -hmm. it. Probably Tom Petrini. Um, and he basically posted it and showed like our averages, which is it looks nice, but it looks really bad because you don't want averages where like everyone's scoring like I don't know ten to seventeen, eighteen points. Like it, it just doesn't look. Good. Oh, let me see if I can find it, actually. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Tom. Someone in my chat said he can't hear us. What the heck? Can't hear us? I can hear you, but somebody in my chat said he can't hear either of us. But it says on my end, on my stream labs, that the, the audio is going through. So, Fernando, it might just be you, man. I don't know. Let me see. I'm going to go to yours. Yeah, I can hear me. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um but I I I was watching Wednesday's game obviously cuz Wednesday uh I was playing on talking to you and you you were just like dead so you were like let's talk on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I was gone. But I mean Friday Friday we just looked tired, man. It was the same sort of thing. It was the same sort of thing we saw tonight which uh I think our main thing aside from shooting and stuff like that, is communication, which is really weird to say for the San Antonio Spurs because we constantly talk about, like, family and, like, you know, we're really close to each other. So mm -hmm. it we've always, like, the Spurs have already always been, like, a close-knit unit. But for some reason this season, it seems like there's just that we're not communicating correctly because you look on some of the plays on on defense and it seemed like we had like three people on on one guy and again like I said we we 
with three people on one guy, we're like triple teaming somebody. We're leaving two people on the on the corner open for a three, and it's like, come on, guys, what are you doing? Um, yeah, we we're, yeah. we aren't doing switches off screens correctly, and yeah, it was, the communication is just. And if I'm looking down, mm-hmm. by the way, for people watching the camera, it's because, like I said, I got uh, Clan's chat down here so i can keep up with it so (laughs) i was i was gonna say this um i think i agree with you like i think communication wise is kind of weird it's really strange though because like that's one thing we should be able to hang our hat on is how good we are defensively but it seems like we're more so just opportunists like i I love the energy and everything's there it's just like i don't know if it's the basketball iq or just not being in the right place It's, it's very strange i know that this team hasn't played a lot together so i know that's part of it too mm-hmm. but sometimes it's like man I, I would think when you have so many high or supposedly high basketball iq defenders that it wouldn't be this many like shocking mistakes on defense yeah. where it's like what so it's very weird so this is something i just thought of so i don't know i i could be very wrong on this but it's just an idea that randomly popped in my head while i was talking to you you know, we constantly talk about how players on the Spurs are, like, competing for, for minutes and everything like that. Do you think that mm-hmm. maybe that has to do with it or no? Like, like say, like, oh, I want to I wanna go for this shot when I know I shouldn't or I should block this shot when I know I shouldn't because I want, you know, that highlight reel. I want that box score so that I get more minutes versus somebody else. Do you think maybe that has to do with it or is that just something that I shouldn't even think about? No, uh, I think part of it, I, I think part of that is, is true. Like when it comes to like, for instance, you know, Keldon Johnson, like, mm-hmm. I think sometimes Keldon, he has so much tunnel vision and his, and his mind is like, I got to score or I'm going to score. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's necessarily like a selfish thing necessarily more yeah. so just like, I have to be the guy or I have to make sure that we win or I have to help us. win. I, I just think that they don't play with a lot of like, team ball mentality sometimes offensively and, and, yeah. and it's it's very I mean, I mean it's really sad to see um and sad to say but it, it's kind of what i'm seeing right now but with that being said though i mean it also kind of contradicts itself it's almost like the eye test versus like the stats because i think the stats show that we're one of the top assist yeah. teams right aren't we number one or I, number we're, we're up there in assist yeah but I get what you're. I get what you're saying, and I agree with it. I don't think it's intentional. Like it's not. It's not a thing where it's like, oh, I got to score so that this person can't. It's not like that. It's just. Uh, it's it's sort of like a passive thing where it's like, okay, I need to do good so I keep my minutes, yeah. and that's sort of taking away from other players. But um, yeah, it's it's weird because again, you just said like it, it's weird that it's so like off point that uh i'm Mm -hmm. trying to gather my words i'm sorry uh it's so like alternate dimension that the spurs are not working as a team because that is something for years that we have commended ourselves on you know our instagram is full of players going like hanging out with each other and you know, Spurs culture is a family thing. You know, we talked about that when we talked about the whole Ben Simmons thing, that the Spurs are family. And now Mm -hmm. we're coming on here and we're saying like, oh, we aren't working as a, as a team efficiently. And it's like, uh, it just sounds weird saying, saying those words that the Spurs aren't working as a team. Well, to be fair, like, even if I think of the last few seasons, um, it's just such a weird dynamic shift over the last three seasons. Like, when you're starting off with DeMar DeRozan in L.A., um, those are ISO players. DeMar DeRozan was kind of more so the facilitator, kind of the best facilitator facilitator on the team, I would say. Um, and then you go into this season, and now it's like it's all on DeJounte, which DeJounte did well mm-hmm. last season as well as a facilitator, but now it's like completely all on him. Um, Derek White's still doing his thing, but just overall, man, it's just, it's just sloppy. I, I don't. I think that's the part that got gets me like the most is mm-hmm. just how sloppy it is. I wish that it just wasn't so sloppy. It's just every game. It's starting to get to a point now where I'm watching it and I'm getting less and less excited. Like I'm there for him. Like I'm cheering yeah. for him. But 
yeah, I'm getting less and less exi- excited yeah, the more it, I watch them play. It's getting hard to like get through these games, man. Like I get you. Like as much as I am a Spurs fan, I'm a diehard Spurs fan. I've lived in San Antonio like my entire life. You can see on the camera like all the Spurs stuff I got around here, but. Man, it's been rough to get through these games. Like, I told you on Wednesday, because, like, I was going to try and stick through the whole Wednesday game because I thought we were going to talk on Wednesday. But then you were like, oh, mm. let's talk on Friday. I stopped watching at the half, man. I was like, I'm not making it through <laughs> like, the two this. this. And <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know, man. Because it's kind of ironic, though, because me and you both made videos <laughs> about, like, when that article came out where it's like, Spurs are least watchable team, and we were, like, all pissed off, oh, and it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, they, they, they might be right here in a few, <laughs> which is, like, sad to say. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it, but it's like, man, if we keep playing yeah. the way we are, and what what is our record right now? Are we, like, three and seven uh, right now or something like that? I'm... I'm going with that. Let's see. Three and six? Three and six. Okay. Is that right? Three and six, I think. So that's yeah. three out of ten games. So that's 30%. Let me do 30% of 82 real quick. Three out of nine games. Right? times three. So if we keep winning, I know it's only the beginning of the season, but yeah. if we're only winning three out of ten games, we're not even going to break Pop's record this year. Cause he needs do, he needs twenty six he needs twenty six games right, and thirty thirty uh, percent of eighty two is twenty four, so we'd be two games short. I'm uh, not saying the Spurs aren't going to win twenty six. I'm saying if this continues, I'm yeah, not saying it's yeah. going to continue, but I'm saying if we use this as a baseline, you know we're we're in trouble. It's very it's very strange, man. Cause I, I'm I'm gonna assume this. I think that we're going to continue to struggle, like in the first half um, of this season. Uh, I I could see us winning some that we shouldn't win, and that's kind of been the case thus far. Like we've been in close games that we shouldn't be in, and it really just came down to who's going to finish. I mm. said this once, and I'll say it again. I do not think that Dejounte Murray should be the main guy finishing. I just don't think that that necessarily needs to be the case. Not saying he can't do it, but that's a lot to put on him. And if he has to take a game or a few games off here and there, like we are screwed. So I would much rather it be like a more team effort. I mean, for instance, that last game really pissed me off. The fact that we had Devin Fassell open quite a few times, missed Mm -hmm. him down the stretch. It was like, what are y'all doing? Um, but with that being said, I think that it's going to have to be Lonnie Walker, Devin Fassell. I, I don't want it to be DeJounte. Not to say he can't do it. Um, yeah. I think he should here and there, but it's going to have to be more of a team ever. And, yeah. and if that's the case, then we, you know, we're just going back to what we did with DeMar DeRozan. Part of the reason why we didn't make the playoffs last season because we were just too heavily dependent on DeMar DeRozan saving the day. Yeah. I, I don't want a hero. I've been watching Vassell since he got drafted, man, and Vassell has been hooping. Like straight up, yeah. <laughs> so I think we need to play more of a sell. But uh, I like what Ruru said in the uh, in the chat. He he, uh, he or she, I don't know, is uh, is she okay? Is she? Uh, said uh, pretty much backing up what we said. Said that uh, they they need to learn how to play together, and it's a team chemistry thing. And I I talk about team chemistry so much on my channel. Because uh, even though I am a Spurs fan, I do try and cover, like, other teams. And Mm -hmm. I've talked about team chemistry so much, dude. Like, if you took a shot every time I talked about team chemistry on my channel, like, (laughs) you might get alcohol poisoning. Uh, Because, I mean, I I talked about, like, the – not to go – not to divert away from the Spurs, but, I mean, I've talked about, Mm -hmm. you know, the Lakers. I made a video, uh, I think, two weeks ago. It's already got mm-hmm. like a hundred views, uh, and like it was a sort of a clickbait title. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it said uh, why the why the 2021 Lakers are destined to fail, and it was like pretty much the whole basis of that video was team chemistry and how they're they're not working together. And um, but uh, I saw I saw Roly or Raleigh in the chat also say uh, one of the things we need is a legit power forward, and I agree with that because. It's it's we're sort of in a weird dynamic where I hear I hear people saying opposite things like like it literally goes back and forth between every single game. Like after one game, somebody will say like, oh, we need 
some uh some more guards and like after another game people will say like oh we need more big men and uh it really boils down to the same thing we always say which is we need a superstar you know we need a little bit of each right now because there's teams that are really good at one thing or really good at both things like you look at Giannis with the Bucks they have a great big man they're going through the paint they're they're finishing really well and then you have other teams obviously like Golden State like their entire game is beyond the arc and right now mm-hmm. we kind of need both like we can't we we don't have like we have good big men we have Jakob and uh we have Eubanks as as much as like people say like Jakob and Eubanks offensive game needs to be worked on and uh mm-hmm. DeJounte and Derek White and all them they can finish but at the same time they're not going to finish as as good as a big man so uh so it's like okay well then what if we shoot beyond the arc well if we try shooting beyond the arc you get what happened tonight which is like we're not making any shots from beyond the three except for Doug McDermott you know Doug McDermott even though he's playing the four you know he he's like shoots lights out from the three in my opinion and uh, yeah. I was talking in the chat. I, I really like playing McDermott. Uh, I like playing Eubanks too. But again, it, it becomes a conversation of minutes because I like Eubanks and I like Jakob. And I like them for two different things. So it's like if we could combine them, and then we have a great center. But they're both good at like two different things. Like Eubanks has a pretty good offensive game, kind of weak on defense sometimes. Jakob, amazing defense game, kind of can't play offense sometimes, you know? Yeah, and I, I said this, like, I end up tweeting this out, and I was joking because I'm really sarcastic, but I end up saying, like, oh, you know what? We're really just one star away. Why don't we go get DeMar DeRozan? And the point that I'm trying to make when I said that was, like, <laughs> yeah, we're we're not, <laughs> we're not, like, one star away from being a, you know, playoff team necessarily. Mm-hmm. Like, we need more than just a star. DeMar DeRozan's playing fabulous right now. Funny thing is, when he was with us, he was also playing great. It was just that, obviously, he didn't really have a second guy. Like, I think, this is just my opinion, I think every single player... Oh, what? hold on. What's up? Something happened in a G League game? <laughs> Something's loud. What is that? What? Something's... What is that? Something loud on my end or your end? No, my end. Oh, okay. Uh, there we go. It was ESPN being stupid. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, anyways. Yeah, what I was saying was like, we're not just one player away. Like, mm-hmm. I would love to say that we are, but we're not. We really do need like s- something else. I, in my opinion, every single player on this team right now, as good as they are, any player that's good, I feel like they're really like the third option on a really good team. Mm-hmm. I, I don't necessarily see, De- and people going to, you know, get mad at this. I don't see DeJounte Murray as the second guy. I, I when I think of second guys in the league, like, dude, it's people like you know C.J. McCollum. I mean, we're talking, uh, you know, if you want to say Clay, like, who's some other sidekicks in the in the league that aren't championship teams? Chris Middleton. Yeah, I was about like, to say Chris Middleton. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not. He, 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 L.J. said, "Stop hating Clay." I'm not hating. I'm just saying that I don't think I, right now how we're constructed. If you're talking about we go and get a star. I think that DeMar DeRozan's a star. I think he's one of the biggest stars in the league right now. I think DeMar DeRozan is an MVP candidate, which he is an MVP. I don't think that. He is an MVP candidate. If he's an MVP candidate, then why didn't we make the playoffs uh, last season? It's because we don't have, we don't really have a, a clear second guy to me. I think DJ is like, you know, third, which is fine, but mm-hmm. I think that's, he's like more of a, a third. Uh, why is that cap? Oh <laughs> People goodness, hating on you in the chat, bro. But uh, I get what you're saying. I, uh, I get what you're saying. Oh no. People no, keep impeccable. saying people keep saying uh uh Lando in the chat. Like they were I was talking about like, oh, we need somebody that has a combination of Eubanks and Jakob. And a lot of people are saying Lando. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't seen enough of him play to make a clear judgment on it, so I'm not gonna talk much on that. But I mean people yeah. are saying he needs to play more, so if he plays more then I can get an opinion on him, you know. I yeah. just so, but uh, yeah. People and Jimmy keeps... and Jimmy Butler and Jimmy Butler said even Jimmy Butler is not a number one guy. Yeah, Jimmy Butler would be like a second guy. Okay, people people getting angry. No, somebody said on speaking facts. 
Okay, I don't know. I don't know. You guys, I don't know, guys. Look, I don't think DJ's a second. Does that, okay, let me just, I just want to say it for a minute. Okay, doesn't it make sense? Your it chat is sense. going off right now, bro. Yeah, they're like angry. Like, it makes sense, though, right? It makes sense. I get what I you're saying. I've never seen DeMar- your chat move this fast, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you see, DJ, if Levine is a number two, then DJ is the number three. Who said Levine was a number two? Did I say that? Levine over D. Oh, oh, okay, okay, all right, you're saying Levine is a number two on that team. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like this, Levine is a possibly number one, number two on that team. DeMar DeRozan on that team is a possibly number one, number two. Yeah, DJ will be like a number, th- on a cha- I'm talking championship team, okay? I'm not just saying just make the playoffs. You get a star that's bigger than DeMar DeRozan, we made the playoffs that last season. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we're talking about superstar or like championship. We're ready to take that next huge level. I don't see if DJ can be the number two guy on a team. I, I don't I don't think his game is set up that way. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and he's making trouble. I know. Makes tr- I know, man. I know. I, I got it. I got it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Gingy. Save, nope. save, the, save the day. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, people keep talking we need a power forward, and that's our biggest issue. I mean, Tim uh, TD was power forward slash center, and, uh, you know, we have all these, these shorter guys – but even with shorter guys, we're not hitting threes. Um, and, you know, we had the talk just like literally right before we got in the call of uh, Chet Holmgren versus uh, Paolo Benchero. And, I mean, Quinn was saying, Quinn, uh, me and Quinn were talking about it, so shout out to Quinn in the chat. But he was saying like, oh, I don't want Chet Holmgren. And he said the exact reason as everybody else, which is his weight. Uh, Chet Holmgren. Uh, can I cuss on your channel? Uh, yeah, sure. I was just gonna say Chet Holmgren is a skinny motherfucker, bro. He is a twig. <laughs> um, so I get the weight thing, like, uh, like he for real looked like anorexic, bro, or whatever the <laughs> the the term is. But um, uh, at the same time, like, look at look at where Giannis was when he started. Look at where Primo was. I mean, you just made a video the other day about, like, Primo got jacked. Look at Evan Mobley. Yeah. Evan Mobley, people were saying Evan Mobley's skinny, and now he's, like, I honestly think that Evan Mobley can win Defensive Player of the Year in the next couple of years, which I also made a video on. Uh, so, I mean, like, people are so quick in the NBA community to talk about, like, oh, this person's too skinny. But... Like, there are literally people paid to work on that sort of thing, like, to get somebody jacked. So, yes, mm-hmm. Chet Holmgren's weight is a problem, but I don't think it'll be a problem in the long run. Um, and we were talking about, like, the whole tanking thing. We were talking, like, oh, is, is tanking worth it even if we don't play our rookies? And uh, I think it was Courtney that said that, so shout out, Courtney. But I think if we had Chet Holmgren... And Joshua Primo, bro, that'd be an unstoppable team. That would, for real, in my mind, and I know this is a crazy comparison, and people probably going to hate on it because Spurs fans hate when people get compared to to our our big three, but I honestly think that Primo and Chet Holmgren could be like a next, like, Tony Parker, Tim Duncan. And the reason I don't want Banchero and I want Holmgren, besides, like, their position and their playing style is also you have to look at their personality. Again, I just said so many times on my channel, I talk about team chemistry. Chet Holmgren has in so many ways proven how much he is a leader, both in basketball and in his community. Like, um, I was going to do a video on him, but it ended up getting scrapped. But, like, he won a bunch of awards uh, for leadership in high school, and he did, like, so much for his community and everything. And then you go to Banchuro, and you watch, like, any Banchuro highlights. And Banchuro's just got, like, you know, all hyped, like, big man vibes. And I, I feel like it could honestly turn into another situation where, um, I- again, I don't want to, like, speculate too much. But I feel like if we got Banchuro instead of Holmgren, it could turn into another Kawhi or Ben Simmons situation where they just feel like they're, you know, they're hype about themselves and they don't really work well in that team sort of vibe in the NBA because, you know, they feel like they're the number one when they're a rookie. Yeah. And and by the way, I agree with everything you said. And it sounds like he's a legit spur. 
and I made I made a face, but I wasn't making a face towards you. Mm-hmm. I made a face because I just read something like really briefly in the chat, and mm-hmm. I, I feel like I I don't mean to like take it off topic for a minute, but I, I feel like it's necessary for me to say this so they'll yeah, like stop getting angry. Okay, can I just say this? Because you know people starting to bring up like how I'm a hypocrite because I love Derek White. Yes, I do love Derek White, but I will say this. Okay, you guys ready? You ready? Listen, Dejounte Murray is a better player than Derek White. Yeah, I said it. He is a better player than Derek White. So stop getting angry with me. I can say it. Dejounte Murray is a better player than Derek White. But what I what, what I will not listen to is someone actually say that CJ McCollum it or, or DJ is better than CJ McCollum. I I don't agree with that. I I don't know. I don't know what you guys are watching. I will not say that. I mean, what do you think? You think that uh, he's better? DJ's better than CJ McCollum? You asking me? Yeah, yeah. What do you What do you think? Nah, D- I'm sorry, Spurs fans. DJ's not better than CJ McCollum. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know where you get that from. Like as bad I mean, as the him... Trailblazers are doing, like he's with with Dame doing bad. I think CJ like he didn't he drop like 38 the other night. Like, I mean, he, CJ's going he is a, he is, a, he is a offensive, I don't want to say juggernaut, that's kind of a strong term, but I mean, offensively, he's ridiculous. Uh, I mean, he kills us almost every time he plays us. Like, I don't know. I don't know. And, and in today's NBA, although I love uh, what my boy um, DJ brings to the table, like defensively, obviously rebounding wise, but as far as like guards are concerned, um, having a guy that can score like CJ McCollum. Uh, that that's just that puts you over the edge um if you got the right team i, I don't know uh let's see yeah Ruru, looking at his Ruru said in the chat that tanking doesn't do anything uh that uh you get you He's, get a top pick and still in rebuild still further away from the goal um i don't know like uh clan clan talked about it earlier i just think like I feel like every few years we're rebuilding, which kind of sucks. Like, ever since 2014, it feels like every three or four years we have a new rotation of players. Like, as soon as, like, 2014 hit, it was like, all right, now our team is DeMar DeRozan, Rudy Gay, and LaMarcus Aldridge. And then, like, three years passed, and it was like, all right, now our team is Lonnie Walker, Derek White, and all these guys. And then, like, another mm-hmm. three years has passed. And now we're like, all right, next year our team's going to be Primo and whoever we draft. And it's like, when are we going to get it right? But um, I really do feel like, you know, I'm on the Primo hype train, and I want Holmgren. And there's people in the chat still talking right now about Holmgren versus Banchero. I've already explained my take on that. Uh, I think I think Banchero is going to have sort of like an ego problem. And I know that's speculation, you know. Uh, and, again, the the thing with Holmgren in the chat right now is, like, talking about, like, his skinniness. Like, I saw Quinn again say, like, I, I feel like uh, Holmgren would, is too skinny to stay healthy and not get injured. Uh, I feel like, again, you can just put him in the weight room for, like, a couple months to a week and you're good to go. Uh, but, I mean, it's hard to say, man. But I... I really think we should pick Holmgren, and I, I I think that he would be good for our team. But a, again, the lottery is random. Even if we even if we supposedly did tank, like all the way down, you could end up like uh, you, you still could get, you know, the eighth pick or something f- from the lottery. Because I mean, that's how the lottery works, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm I'm not crazy about like purposefully purposefully uh, tanking at all. Yeah. Like I've never been kind of hype about that. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, you know, uh, just play your hardest, and if you're not good enough, then you're just not going to be good enough. I mean, how many teams have tanked purposely tanked over the years and got no success out of it? I don't even know if I can think yeah. of a team that's recently won a championship from tanking. Like mm-hmm. any of them. Have any of them actually? I mean, the 76ers did, and look what's happening with Ben Simmons. And then you have, uh, yeah. I watched uh, OKC, right? OKC is that one? Did they tank purposely to I get uh, their big th- their big three? Um, I um, I watched a Jimmy High Roller video recently though, and he was talking about like butterfly effects in the NBA, and he brought mm-hmm. up some teams that were tanking, and um, 
I forget I forget if it was like Chris Boss or Dwayne Wade. It was like one of the Heat players, but he was talking about like the Heat were trying to tank and somehow they yeah. accidentally won a game. <laughs> I don't know how that oh, works, but uh, I feel like I remember something like yeah, that. I don't like it's like in the back of my head. Like somehow oh. they some they were trying to tank and somehow they accidentally won and by accidentally winning they got a different pick. But by getting a different pick, they actually got the better pick. So okay, it was strange. like it was like they had a plan, the plan went bad, and then the plan went good again somehow. You know? That's really so weird. So it's like tanking like tanking intentionally never goes the way you want it to. But mm-hmm. I feel like it would be good to get like some sort of draft pick. But I get what Ruru was saying. Where again, I was saying like it seems like every couple years we have like a new like starting like new set of like franchise guys. I guess you could say like uh, it's like when are we gonna get it right? Because we had uh again like I I know I'm repeating myself, but uh it's like we had Demar Derozan, Lamarcus Aldridge, Rudy Gay, and then it was like all right, get rid of them. Now we have um Nani Walker. Derek White, DeJounte Murray. And it was like, all right, now we want to get rid of them again. And we want to play Primo and whoever. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, we're all on the Primo hype train now, but what if Primo doesn't work out? Are we going to try again in three more years? Like, yeah. Like, you know? And, and you know what? Uh, I completely agree with you. I think that it's going to be – it's very – it's going to be a long road, um, to say the least. Um, and hold on. I'm – who said something? Yeah. Raleigh said oh, Robinson and Duncan were both number one picks. And then, yeah. We didn't tank, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, by the way, uh, yeah, so let me address this really quick. Raleigh uh, said Holmgren equals Nowitzki. <laughs> earlier, somebody said that CJ McCollum was one-dimensional. I, I don't, I never saw CJ McCollum as one-dimensional. Um, what does that Arjun, even mean? Just like, like he, he only, only does scores. one thing. <laughs> he only scores. Uh, that's yeah. uh, pretty important. But okay, so he averaged about twenty three. I got it on the screen. He averaged about twenty three points. Um, and let's just look at last season. If you don't even want to talk about this season, he had a steal a game. Yeah. He had nearly five assists a game. He had four rebounds a game. I don't think that's necessarily just one dimensional. I mean, you said that like he's a sharpshooter or something. Like, and then this season, uh, twenty three point four thus far. Uh, 1.4 steals, 1.1 blocks, 3.8 assists, and 4.1 rebounds. So he's he's contributing in all facets of the game. So I, I don't know what you mean by he's one dimensional. But yeah. hey, if I have if I have a one dimensional score that's shooting 45 percent and 40 from three, I'll take it. I I don't know what to tell you. So yeah, no. Uh, C J McCollum is the definition of a second guy. That's what I see as a second guy. But I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Shout out I'm Raleigh. T- I, I, uh, shout out Raleigh or Roly. Um, he said uh, he said in the comments exactly what I was saying. He said we can't keep drafting four year prospects, and like um, uh, can I? I just want to talk about something in the chat if that's cool with you. Um, yeah, go ahead. LJ said uh, y'all forget DJ played uh, defense. How good would he be if he didn't waste energy on defense and used his energy to score? I take that as saying telling DJ to not play defense, and I think with the new foul baiting rule, that is not a good idea. I've talked about, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about in some new videos coming out, um, that with the new foul baiting rules, defense is becoming such a huge important uh, role again in the NBA because you can actually play defense without getting BS called on you, and. It's one reason the Bulls are so good right now because, I mean, they're, uh, if you look at like the team stats, they're like dominating in steals and blocks and everything right now. So, I mean, if we just don't play defense, then that's going to be a problem. But, I mean, that's kind of what we're seeing right now. I was talking earlier, you know, you got three people on one guy and you're leaving threes open. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, And somebody said, look up DeJounte Murray's uh, stats. So, give me a second. I did. But give me a minute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something. Uh, actually, no, I can do it this way. Whatever. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dejounte is playing great. I don't, yeah. I don't know what you're. I mean, I, I don't know what, what do you want. 
I mean, two steal, two steals, uh, point four blocks, but two steals, eighteen points, um, eight assists, set seven point about eight rebounds. Yeah, he's an overall good player. I don't, I don't know yeah. what am I looking for. Yeah, and that you're saying that these stats are better than CJ. I, I mean, I get. It. I mean, CJ McCollum has Dame on his team, and he's putting up these numbers, and I mean, kind of taking yeah. over for Dame. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I, I think that's part of it, though. Like, to be fair to the chat, I think that's part of it because Dame has been playing, like, booty the last couple games. But um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess, hold on. You don't think DJ can average 23 uh, 20, in, in, a, in, a, in a season? No. I don't. He'll, he'll be under 20. He'll be something like 17, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I, no, I don't think he can average 23 points. In, I mean, 23 points, that seems like it's not a lot, but that's a whole lot in the NBA. Yeah. Like, that's a lot. Like, even DeMar, as well as he was scoring last season, he was, like, 21, right? Like, it's really hard to get over 20 in the NBA. So, no, I don't think that he can average 23 in a season. Yeah. If, if he if he does, it will be this season. So, we'll just wait and see. But I don't I don't think... But that's not me dissing DJ. I love DJ. I love this team. I, I say right now, DJ's the best player on the team. Like, easy. I will say it. Yeah. I think he's better than Derek White now. I think he surpassed Derek White. Yeah. Even, uh, as, a, even as a playmaker. Shout out uh Roly and uh Tito by the way. Tito uh to like for the tanking thing. Like again, it doesn't have to be intentional tanking cuz Tito said Boston had the most ping pong balls the year that Spurs got Duncan and then uh Raleigh or Roly again. I don't know how you pronounce it, so I'm sorry, dude. I'm trying to shout you out in the chat, but I don't know which one it is. It's like <laughs> it's like Quan calling me Genji. Uh, I know, uh, he said, I know TD was not a product of intentional tanking, but he is a number one pick who carried the Spurs for two decades. So, I mean, if we don't, if we don't intentionally tank and we just do bad, like we're doing right now, we could still get like a really good pick. So, and I, and I could be wrong, but, um, from the time that Tim Duncan was drafted, uh, which was what? 96. He was drafted. Wasn't he drafted the same year that we got? The first championship wasn't he ninety nine? Oh, the ninety. No, I don't think. Let me look I it up. I don't think so. I'm pretty it sure was it was ninety seven. What when was Tim? Somebody in the chat, come on, y'all know. I'll look it up I right know. now. I'll look it up right now. Okay, okay. Uh, what I was when gonna say was, was Tim Duncan. I'm pretty sure it was ninety nine. Uh, ninety seven. Ninety seven. Ninety seven. Okay. I thought he yeah. was drafted the same year we got the championship. My bad. Nah, nah, nah. He did get rookie of the year. I was going to say this. I was going to say that, um, dr- like, finding players and finding talent in the NBA has improved so much now than it did in the 90s. Mm-hmm. So even though Tim Duncan was a number one overall pick, and, you know, no matter what, every year, you're going to be pretty set if you pick the person that people expect to be number one, one overall pick. You're going to be pretty good. But if you look over even recent years, that's not always necessarily the case. Like, We've had number six, number seven, number eight picks become like superstars that end up being the best of their draft. Uh, all I'm saying is drafting has improved so much since the 90s so you don't necessarily have to just bank on, oh, it has to be the number one. But, you know, you, you can kind of get diamonds in the rough everywhere um, because of how much it improved. Actually, I'm going to look over. I'm going to look at the actually. Let's see. I'm going to look at every draft. I want to look at that. Uh, Every I mean, me and, Swiss Eel, uh, me and Swiss Eel. Me and Swiss Eel did uh, Buster Steel when he was on. So he came on my podcast. Uh, that's what I was trying to tell you in the chat when you were messing with the projector. Mm-hmm. Like me and Swiss Eel, like dogs now. Like uh, I love him. He he came on my podcast. We've been chilling. We've been talking on Twitter in the DMs, and uh, like his main thing, like on his channel, was like, "Oh, this person is like." underrated this person's overrated and yeah. so I, I made one of those those tier list and i surprised him i didn't tell him at all that we were gonna do it so i just pulled up like while we were on stream i was like all right swiss eel i've made this tier list and we are gonna go through every player in the draft this year and say whether they are uh as expected steal or bust and like we like ranked all of them so yeah yeah, it's, I ended up watching it. It was pretty. It was pretty great. I was gonna. Oh, I got it up. All right. So, this is what I was talking about. All right. So I'm looking if at you stream, look. Yeah. 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 So if you look at like every draft, 
usually the number I mean the number one is a good pick no matter what but usually it's somebody else that's outside there like even this right here like I would say easy right Joel and B at number three um mm -hmm. just trying to show that you don't necessarily have to get a number one overall pick to you know we're, we're kind of out of those days um unless there's yeah. a Tim Duncan in the draft uh yeah. you see Carl Anthony Towns Andrew Russell uh, of course uh Przingis was a big one yeah like maybe, I, maybe this one maybe I know I know people really don't want us to draft another guard because we have so many guards and we need size again and but I mean it could be the same thing with Primo this year like everybody was complaining about uh Primo being drafted uh, and then we like started to watch him play and then like he reacted to like the drafting Primo was genius video and I was like all right we we didn't like that he was a guard, but he's actually going off. And I think it could be the same thing with uh, there's one guy on there. I think he's towards like 10th or 11th. And I think his name is, uh, uh, I think it's Ty Ty Washington. He's a <laughs> guard. And, uh, I mean, he he hits threes and he'd be good for a yeah. team. He, he'd work really well off Primo because Primo, uh, I, I think we said Primo plays the two, right, a lot. And I think – Ty, uh, Ty Ty plays the one, and Ty Ty has like a I think like a forty percent three right now, and I mean we were just talking how we need like to step up our three, so I mean yeah. again it would be a conversation of minutes with like everybody like Vassal and Dejounte Murray and like all those guys, but say we get like towards the lower end of the draft, you know we can pick up Ty Ty and then we got Ty Ty at the one and we got a uh, Primo at the two. I mean that's a monster right there that's that's yeah. literally like a dame cj that we were talking about yeah and and i mean and really like if you look through like you were saying like you can get somebody around 10 11 and be okay like even yeah. if you look right here i mean i would say i don't think people will argue with me on this if i said donovan mitchell's the best one out of this draft i mean he was 13th um lonzo was second markel fultz was first uh, Jason Tatum was three, so maybe people might argue with that. I, I would still say I'll take Donovan Mitchell over Jason Tatum right now, yeah. but I mean that's just me. Um, here, let me just go a few but more. But again, years Jason Tatum is another one of those guys where it's like you got to think oh. about. Oh, excuse me. You got to think about uh, team chemistry because Tatum is an amazing Celtics player, but you got all this news coming out with Marcus Smart, and uh, I'm gonna have a video coming out on Wednesday about it, uh, where. Uh, <laughs> and I'll, I'll give you a little sneak peek of the uh, the title because I've been I've been working on my titles. I I, I I think the the best way to make a good YouTube video is to have a spicy title. So I've been working on those. Uh, What's up? But it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be called Dear Jason Tatum dot dot dot. You're not Kobe. Oh, I like that. Uh, and it's basically <laughs> gonna talk about like ever since Tatum's sixty point game. You know, he's trying to play that hero ball, and, you know, he's taking, like, all these contested shots, and it's like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you got three yeah. Bulls players on you, and you got people open, and you're just not passing it because you want that highlight reel. And it's like, dude, you're shooting you're shooting a double red on 2K right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know? It's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty bad. And, like, and even if we look at – hold on, wait a minute. What year are we in? 2018? Okay. Boom. Luka Doncic's at three. Wait, what? Trey Young's at Oh, you're th talking about the drafts. I was like, it's 2021, my guy. <laughs> oh, no, no. No, no. Yeah, yeah. My bad. <laughs> yeah. So, so Luka Doncic's at three, Trey Young at five, and then you jump SGA, who's playing phenomenal. He's at mm -hmm. like 11. So, you'll see. I just do 2019. I'll just do a couple more. Um, Zion Williamson, John Morant's number two. Uh, yeah, I think without a doubt, he was the best. Tyler Hero's 13. So yeah, you you can get you can get you some stars in there. You don't have to necessarily be dependent on the number one pick here. Lamella Ball was three. Um, uh, this wasn't a great draft, was it? I guess we don't know yet. It's only twenty twenty. Yeah, we mm -hmm. don't know. And then this newest one, yeah, we don't know yet. But yeah, overall, what I'm just trying to say is like, you know, as long as you get a lottery pick, uh, you can you can get lucky here and there. Number one picks aren't yeah. always the best pick in the draft but then with that being said if we get the number one pick i'm sure the spurs will pick the best player so it is, yeah. is what it is i don't know the we'll spurs see. are really good about like using draft picks because i mean we got primo in this draft and uh 
they were talking about they were talking about it during the game as well like literally during this magic game they were pulling up stats about like how much of our how much of our team like was from the draft and it, that's always been a thing with the spurs like you go back to like tim duncan tim duncan is one of the only players that uh along with like kobe and some other guys that have stayed on a team for like uh, something amount of seasons. I think it was like, uh, what was it, like 19 seasons? Let's stay mm-hmm. on one team. So uh, that's always been a thing with the Spurs. You know, we never really do trades that often unless something happens that's crazy, like Kawhi saying, yo, I'm out of here. Uh, so we always are really efficient in the draft, I feel like, which is a good thing. So no matter what our pick is, yeah, we're going to pick somebody good up. But I, I feel like, you know, the higher our pick is, you know, that's just a given that uh, it'll be mm-hmm. better because, I mean, that's just how the draft works. I mean, that that's literally the draft, you know, mm-hmm. so. We're going to we're gonna be okay, man. I'm I'm cool with it. Yeah. Um, well, look, we went for, well, how long, how long have we been on? We went for about 46 minutes. Yeah. I think that's. That's a pretty good chunk. All right. You got to um, hop off, man? I think so. I think I'm going to finish watching this game because Primo just made an incredible step back uh, three that just got the Spurs within six. So that's pretty nice. So I think that I'm going to watch some of that because people are kind of going crazy over it. Wait a minute. But All right, man. Before, before I do that, before I do that, friend, we're going to have to plug your stuff. Hold on. Oh, yeah. I was about to right. ask if I could do that. Yeah, man. You you don't have to ask that. Mm. All right, yeah. So um, I know Clan showed it on on the screen a little while ago. Um, I'm Genji on YouTube. It's with three Y's because I couldn't get it with one or two Y's. Uh, but I, I talk about basketball stuff on my channel, so I would really appreciate it if you subscribed on like on 189 or 190 right now. I'm trying to hit 250 by the summer. Uh, I do talk about every uh, as many teams as I can. I don't just focus on the Spurs. I am a Spurs fan, so I talk about Spurs like mainly, like with Clan here. But uh, I do try and talk about every team, and I, I got a podcast on on every every Sunday called Nathan But Nick because Nathan's my my IRL name. So that's on YouTube, that's on Spotify, that's on Apple Podcasts, wherever you, wherever you get it. So. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate you having me on, Clan. You got an awesome chat, man. I like talking with them. I hope some of them can come over to my channel. I hope I didn't sound dumb or have any like insane takes. So. No, no, <laughs> no. I, everything I say is crazy. So it's it, it, I don't know. You're the tame one. They're probably like, man, Clan, dude, just put him on. Like you don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. So you're good. <laughs> All right. But well, yeah, bro, I pre I appreciate you coming through. Um, and I do like your content. So you need to keep it up. I appreciate um, it. Yeah, and I love the stream with uh, you and Swish Hill. And I think I saw, uh, were you on there with uh, Cool Hero G one time? Uh, yeah, Hero known as Cool G. We uh, yeah. we we're we're uh, I'm gonna get with him to see if he can do a, another stream here in a few because okay. he like last minute had something come up, and so he oh, was okay. gonna be like on the call like me and you are right now. But he yeah. and but like last minute he was like, hey, I'm having to drive somewhere, so I'm gonna join the call in the car. And I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> and so that's why I was like, uh, on the episode with him, it's like cracking up a lot, and then like he oh, dropped okay. like halfway through. But he was like, hey man, just let me uh, just let me know if you want to do another episode when I'm actually like there and we can do something. So I'm gonna get with him so uh, cool G and me can do like an actual video. And then okay. uh, I've done episodes with. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know this guy, but uh, CJ Hoop Talks, he's really cool. I I, I mentioned him in my uh, my Primo video. Uh, yeah. Me and him are, like, super tight. Like, uh, he reached out to me whenever I used his clip in, like, the Primo vid, and I got super mm-hmm. scared because I was like, oh, no, I used his content. Is he going to, like, <laughs> call me out because, like, I pulled the clip from his? But he actually, like, shouted me out on, like, his story, and he was like, yo, this is one of the best Spurs videos I've seen in a long time, you know? And I was like, thank you, man. So me and him started talking, and he's been on the podcast a couple of times. So, like, me and him are super tight, cool, too. So, uh, but, nice. yeah, man, I'll, I'll see you later. I really appreciate uh, coming on, and, uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, bro. Thank right. you. Peace out. All right, bro. All right. 
All right, chat. We are going to be finishing up the stream in my channel because there are still a few other things I want to talk about before we end the stream because we are not quite at an hour yet. So I'm, I got some, some other minor stuff I want to talk about real quick, and then we will finish off the episode. So... Um, anyway, let's get into it. We're going to have this gray bar here on the side just because, or actually, I probably, I can fix it. I just was going to be lazy, but actually, let me go ahead and fix it so that it doesn't look weird for you guys. Here, I'll crop it real quick. Uh, there we go. All right. So the main thing I wanted to talk about, uh, um, I mean, we, we already talked about defense on Clan's uh, podcast. That's the main thing I was going to talk about. Um, next thing was going to be uh, Cat liked to tweet. Um, I thought that was really funny because we were just talking about um, – excuse me, guys. All I'm doing is drinking water. I got, like, hiccups or something. Uh, so I really apologize for that. But, um, yeah, uh, right after we talked about Bobo liking a tweet, Cat liked a tweet, uh, a tweet right after. And what was really funny is, like, he didn't want to get fined for tampering again. And so uh, he, he went on, and he was like, uh, I, I got hacked. My password changed. And it was like, no, no, you didn't, dog. That was you liking the tweet. We all know it was. But uh, it was just really funny to see an NBA player basically pull the, like, oh, my cousin was on my account excuse. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where Cat goes if he gets traded. I want I want to know what where y'all think he he'll, he'll get traded. Um, but I think Cat is one of the is really good for Minnesota. I mean, we were I, I talked about in my recent video. Like, I feel like Timberwolves defense is one of their main assets right now, and part of that defense is Cat. So uh, it's if he leaves Minnesota. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where Minnesota ends up. But uh, next thing I got on here, and this will probably be the last thing because I don't have much written down for this week because the majority of the podcast was going to be chilling with Clan like it, like we just did. But um, last thing I want to do on here, I waited until today. I waited until today so I could do it on stream chat. Nike releases city jerseys. I have not seen these yet. I wanted to react to them on the podcast. So let's go through. All right. Come on, just show me the jerseys already. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Atlanta Hawks. I dig it. I dig it. I like the the wing going across Atlanta. Um I, I like the uh, the color scheme as well. I would have personally gone with the inverse colors. Uh, I would have gone with probably the red and then the yellow. But uh, then the, the the bird wouldn't be red, so uh, never mind. But uh, I don't – I'm not a huge fan of, like, yellow jerseys. So I don't know what other color you would go with, but I do like the red bird. The, uh, are these the Celtics ones? The Celtics ones are a little basic, but it is going back to sort of that Bill Russell and, like, Larry Bird. So, kind of like a throwback jersey. Um, you know, again, I, I think it looks kind of simple, but it does go back to sort of their history. So, Nets, uh, I, I don't really have an opinion on this one. Um... Charlotte looks clean. I like the the gradient here that they've gone with. They've kind of gone with the, uh oh they and they got the hex right here. I didn't even notice that. So they are called the Hornets and they got court, sort of this honeycomb here. So uh, I like how they did that. It's it's subtle. It took me a minute to realize it. I like the subtlety to it. Uh, Chicago, um, again, sort of like a, a throwback jersey to their uh, to their titles. Uh, 
Cavaliers Cleveland. Okay. Uh, you got the the actual like ca uh Cavalier in the middle. Okay. Dallas. Um, looks nice. Is that a cowboy hat it's got on there? Uh, again, pretty simple, but uh, nice city jersey. It seems a lot of teams are going for like throwback themes, which I really like. Um, Denver. Uh, kind of simple. I don't. I don't know what the the rainbow is for on the side. Uh, somebody will have to explain to me what the uh what the significance to the rainbow is to uh to Denver. Cause I don't know. Detroit pretty symbol the Warriors have this little like lightning bolt on the side which I don't get like why they have like the lightning bolt uh it looks clean don't get me wrong but what does the lightning have to do with uh Golden State and stuff the Rockets one looks clean the Rockets one yeah the Rockets one just looks clean I really like it Pacers jersey uh, once again, sort of like a uh, throwback type theme. I like it. Memphis. Memphis is just really simple. I wish they would have gone with like this old school type one down in the bottom left corner. I wish they would have gone with like uh, like almost like a Vancouver Grizzlies type jersey. Miami, I saw what you were going for. Uh, your last year ones were better. The neon ones were way better than this. Like, I get what you were going for. You wanted it to be, uh, what's it called? Like, the magazine cutout letters. But I just don't think it was executed well. The Bucks, pretty simple, but they got the, uh, the different colors on the side. I dig it. I really like it. Um, I wish they would have kept this cream in there, though. Cause I really do like this cream color with the with the green, uh, and the blue. But wolves, the wolves one is just kind of simple. They didn't really add much to it. It's just a different font and it says wolves on it. New Orleans, uh, same thing. New Orleans, like they didn't really change anything about it. Uh, it says Nola on it. New York just says New York. Okay, see, they got it down the, the side, which is nice. Uh, it looks pure white, though, so I don't know what's up with that. But um, Magic ones look nice. Uh, they do look similar to the ones they had a, uh, the past few years, though. But uh, I, I think they look clean. 76ers uh, looks all right. Looks sort of like this uh, AI jersey over here. Um, is this, uh, okay, it's Portland, because they got Dame everywhere, and Blazers. Okay, Rip City, uh, I like that. Um, uh, I don't, uh, someone will have to tell me, like, what Rip City and, and everything like that means, I'll be honest, because I don't know, like, the significance behind that, but I do like when... I do like when in city jerseys, they don't put the actual city. They put, like, a, a nickname. Like, Milwaukee had, like, a, like Cream City or whatever it was. Um, like, uh, San Antonio's, like, got, like, the whole, like, Fiesta thing. Like, I like when teams, like, don't just put, like, Spurs or San Antonio. Or, like, we were talking about earlier with the Timberwolves. They just put Wolves. Like, I like when they put, like, a spin on it with something about, like, their culture. So, uh, like, here we have Sacramento. Like, it, it doesn't just say Sacramento. It says Sac Town. Like, uh, yeah. Ooh, the Spurs. Okay, the Spurs one. Got the Fiesta colors. Nice. I dig it. Washington. Nice. Uh, kind of simple. It just looks like an inverse of this one right here that, uh, Bradley Beal's wearing. But... Ooh, the Toronto ones look clean. The Toronto ones look good. I like the Toronto ones. The black with that font. And throw back to this jersey right here. I like that. Alright. I don't have much of a take on these jerseys, but I knew I know y'all wanted my uh my opinion on them, so I waited to look at them on stream. Um we are at an hour and seven Ooh. minutes here. So uh, I will go ahead and call the stream there, guys. I hope you enjoyed.
And that is all I have for this episode. It will be up soon with the timestamps. And yeah, follow on uh, TikTok. TikTok has clips of the podcast. Uh, follow on Twitter. I keep in contact with y'all on Twitter. Like I said on Twitter that this Nathan Budnett episode was going to be with Clan. Like all that ki- kind of stuff. Um, this podcast also available in audio with uh, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, you know, all that good stuff. So uh, links will be in the description. Clan's link will be in the description as well. Shout out to him.